Welcome into another edition of Sports Bar. I'm your host, Travis Stanley, with your panelists, Braxton, Greg, and Jack. We're glad you've joined us for another episode. And right now we're going to jump into some local athletics, guys. Uh, and let's first talk about App State's win this past Wednesday against UL Lafayette. Um, App jumped on them early in the first half, uh, went to the half 24 to nothing, and I think that was probably one of the more complete um, first halves of, of football that I've seen all uh, all season, and the defense played really well in the second half. We didn't, you know, put any more points on the board in the, in the second half. But what did you guys see um, specifically out of that game? It was a pretty substantial win. Um, I mean, that's the first time that Louisiana Lafayette's been beaten at home since 2002. It was a good game all around by a number of players. I mean. Uh, Lamb was, I think, 12 for 16 in the passing game. Uh, Jalen Moore nailed down 77 yards and 10 carries. Uh, Desmond Reed, who, full disclosure, is a, is a student, had two of the five sacks. I thought a number of players just played phenomenally in the game. Yeah, certainly. Braxton, what did yeah, you see? Yeah, uh, well, I just want to bring up here, you know, good call last week, because you predicted a three-score win for App State, and it was actually a three-score win. So yeah. good job for Travis there. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, it was just a... In the second half, nothing really happened. Kind of boring second half. Yeah. Uh, kind of Coach Satterfield just kind of let off all the forces and just kind of let it go as it, as it was. But yeah, great, great, great win. And um, finally, Cox will be back next week, moving on throughout the season. It's just, I kind of see every single time we see an app game now, it's to the point where there's, there's three tier system in college football. The top 25 teams, teams that are just outside as far, kind of like App State, and then the teams that are in our conference. Pitiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we're just running over teams like they're not. We're and, not. And in a not. season like this year, where you know Arkansas State is having a down year, uh, I mean Troy's playing well, but Georgia Southern doesn't seem to be up to the same par mm -hmm. as they have been in, in years past. So it and definitely does seem like a, a lean year for. Yeah, the Sun it's the conference isn't great, and we get to play Troy soon. And I think they're are they undefeated so far. They're right? currently five and one. Five and one. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I kind of think Apple beat them pretty handily, even though they're ahead of us in the standings. It's State's just not, they're just yeah, way, yeah. Way, too Troy, way ahead of everybody else in the conference. Their one loss was a slim loss to, um, I believe, I believe it was Clemson. Um, and they played them really well. Um, Clemson didn't really come out to play very much in, in that game. And uh, I think was, Troy, Troy definitely surprised that That game in resembled that a lot of App State versus Tennessee. Yeah. It was kind of mm -hmm. like Troy versus Clemson, App State versus Tennessee. They resembled each other quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jack, uh, what did you see? Well, I think we just saw an all-around good performance from the whole team. You know, most of the time when we watch a football game, we see we have one player that really outshined the rest of them. But with this game, we really saw that the whole team got in on the effort. Uh, the defense played really well. We've been saying all year that the defense is the main point. Uh, still had a strong running game behind Jalen Moore. Taylor Lamb played pretty well in the passing game. I think we just saw uh, the team moving forward uh, should be pretty strong throughout the season. I don't see them slowing down anytime soon. I think Troy is really the only team we should have. Uh, have to worry about, but I don't think it, it's a big worry. No. Yeah, yeah. So, certainly, I would say Georgia Southern Thursday night. Uh, you know, it's it's on ESPNU, so it's somewhat more. You know, seven thirty start. I believe so. So it's somewhat more of a, a prime time game for us. So I'm sure they'll get up for that game. Um, but definitely, Troy is kind of the one to circle uh, down the road. But. Yeah. Uh, looking at this week's opponent, it's homecoming here at App State. We play Idaho. Um, Idaho is seemingly somewhat better than they were the previous two years. That being said, I still don't think they're you know that great. Frankly, they're Idaho. I mean, they're, they're dropping back down to the FCS level after this season, along with New Mexico mm -hmm. State, um, which honestly I feel like is a, is a good call. Um, but my biggest, or the, the thing I want to see most out of, I guess this game against Idaho is the game that we saw against Lafayette, I want to see that for, for both halves. Yeah. Um, so instead of, you know, 24 nothing, I want to see a 48 nothing shutout. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be 48 nothing, but play two halves the way you, like you played against Lafayette in the first half. Mm -hmm. um, what do you guys... Uh, I mean, I feel pretty cautiously optimistic in terms of App's chances for that game. Uh, but that said, I don't know. I think that there's some good pieces to Idaho. The quarterback, uh, Matt Lineman, had a really good game last week, uh, completed 29, 36 throws. Um, and Idaho has only had two losses, sort of like App, and they were out of conference play. I don't know. I tend to think that this could be maybe a little bit of a tougher one than we're anticipating, but could be wrong. I, just, I, th I think that there's some similarities there in terms of how App has sort of gone through their season and how Idaho has gone through their season. I think it'll make for a good game. If Idaho runs up tempo uh, with their quarterback, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think it's been proven that our secondary can be 
you're pretty susceptible to to a quarterback who can really sling it and when they get on the line you know okay we just got this first down 25 yards down the field we're not going to lollygag down the field we're going to run down there get to the line get the ball snapped so I think that possibly could could give some trouble if if they decide to do that Braxton? Yeah, uh, I'm going against Greg here. I'm sorry. It's all right. Hey. I, I, don't, I don't think it's. I don't, be... I'm not always right. <laughs> yeah, just saying. I don't. I don't think it's going to be that close. I mean, it. I don't think it'll be a blowout, 48 to nothing. Yeah. But it. Every every game that we've seen that App State's played, they're they're beating teams fairly easily. Akron Akron was a caveat to that. Yeah. But the teams they the teams that they beat and win, it, it's it's not been much of a showing for the other team. They just totally destroy them. Yeah. 24 to nothing is not an absolute destruction of, of the other, other team Lafayette, but it's, uh, yeah, I, I'm going against Greg. Just going to say it's not going <laughs> to be a blowout, but they're going to win you know, fairly easily. Yeah. And Jack, quickly. Well, I think as Greg was talking about, with uh, as far as the deep ball, that's the one thing the app has to wor uh, worry about. Opponents have seen it. It works pretty well against App State. So what I think Coach Satterfield has to worry about is he knows that his secondary, it's a smaller secondary. They tend to get beaten down by fast receivers and taller receivers so I think his focus should be on the front four getting after the quarterback and maybe giving those guys a chance because when they do have a chance to make a play on the ball we've seen some pretty good interceptions from those uh, those secondary the secondary and the cornerbacks this year so I think coach Shatterfield should really focus on getting after the quarterback in this one certainly um, so that's App State football transitioning to App State women's soccer. They played Georgia Southern uh, yesterday. They won three to two goals by Klein, uh, Bass, and Osterbind. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. And, and Braxton, I know that you had spoken to a, a player or two mm. uh, about the upcoming games uh, they have uh, for this week and kind of those implications. Yeah, this this week is a really really large week for their uh, program. I think they play what is it, Georgia State this fr uh, Friday, and then I believe they play. Uh, it's Southern uh, UL Lafayette Southern and South Alabama. All right, U, U, uh, UL Lafayette and then Southern Alabama on a Sunday. And if they can win these two games, according to the, one of the players on the team, uh, they should get a bid for the tournament, uh, NCAA tournament. Now, if not, you know, there's always you know when you win your conference tournament, you're in. But uh, these two these two games are, are, are big for the program. They're, they're pretty confident that they'll win on Friday. Now Sunday, um, Southern Alabama. I think knocked off one of the better teams in Florida, and I, I, I just slipped my mind to forget who that was. But they they've uh, they've beat a pretty good program, so that that Sunday game's the one to watch. If they can knock them off. They're they're pretty confident they'll win Sunday. If they can win uh, Friday, if they can win Sunday, they should make the tournament. But if not, you know they've had a pretty it's a pretty strong season uh, this, this year. And and that would you know be a marker of, of a, a huge growth uh, for women's soccer mm -hmm. here at App State. And, uh, I'm going to definitely try to attend the, the Sunday game if, oh, I, yeah. if I can. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know about e either of you, uh, Greg or Jack, but uh, should be a, a good finish to a, what has been a, a pretty exciting um, uh, s season for uh, App State women's soccer. And the tournament this year uh, is in uh, Alabama. I believe Troy is hosting the, the women's tournament. I won't, That's I, a good question. It, it's in Alabama. <laughs> I believe Troy is, is the host yeah. uh, this year for for the women's tournament. Um, but uh, we'll certainly see how they, they do this weekend. Uh, we'll be right back uh, after this break. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. Now she's holding on for dear life. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat? One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. For this week's Mountaineer Spotlight, we have an audio interview from Jalen Moore talking about his experience with Mountaineer football. Check it out. Jalen Moore is a sophomore from Shelby, North Carolina in the Big Talk at Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina. Senior Marcus Cox has been the go-to running back for the past three years. Sadly, in App's game against University of Miami, Cox suffered an undisclosed injury. Moore has taken his place and has proven that he is worthy to fill the shoes of the university's beloved running back. Well, I was waiting on my opportunity to come this year, you know, to step in, you know, with a role like that, a bigger role than last year. And, you know, when it came, I was just excited, and I just know I had to take full advantage of it. 
in App State's game against University of Akron, Moore rushed an astonishing 257 yards and 149 yards in the most recent game against Georgia State University. You don't expect the, you know, first start of the season you to do something that good, but I always have high confidence in myself and the team do also. So, I mean, I just knew if I stepped in and, you know, played my hardest, you know, we hit on all cylinders that it, it would be that it would be potentially that type of game. I, I definitely talked to him just saying just go out there and do your thing. I was like, just go out there, don't worry too much, don't think about anything, just go out there and play play your game. I was like, you're a good running back, you don't have to think too much, just go out there and do what you do, you'll be fine. And he had a, he had an awesome game. You can see as the games come along, he's, he's gotten better each game. So now, uh, once I'm back, I expect the same things from him. And if we both could put up numbers like that, we'll, this offense and this team will go a long way. I knew I had big shoes to fill with Marcus being out, you know, holding the running game down, you know, putting, putting it on my back. You know, sometimes you got to carry the team, get the offense going. It is not known when Cox will be returning to the field, but as far as we can tell, App State is in good hands. Now turning to the national sports scene. Uh, guys, first, starting with college football game, college football games from, from around the country. Uh, a few of those scores that were notable, Alabama trounced Tennessee 49-10. Uh, Ohio State was in a good one against Wisconsin. They won, uh, Ohio State did 30-23 to in overtime. And uh, Clemson surprisingly had a, a tough time shaking NC State 24-17. That game was also in, in overtime. And uh, Jack, I just wanted to ask you, um, you know, the, the college football playoffs, ever since, you know, that became a thing for, you know, this past year, um, immediately becomes who do we think is going to be in the college football playoff, even in the preseason, uh, which is obviously silly, but that's what talking heads do. They, they talk about things they don't know yet. Um, so, you know, looking at this season so far, who do you think might be, you know, in that contention? Well, you look at Alabama, and obviously they've been the most dominant team in college football this season. Somehow, Nick Saban, year after year, brings in a recruiting class that can always seem to dominate on the ball. They always play hard-nosed football. Lane Kiffin has come in, uh, has brought in his offense. They've played very well. So I look to Alabama to definitely be uh, in the college football playoff. And now that I've said that, there will be an upset somewhere. They won't make it in. Who knows? But I think Alabama has a very good shot of uh, running the board this season and definitely making it into the playoff and possibly going into the national championship game. Uh, when you look at Ohio State, Ohio State, a very close game against Wisconsin. Uh, it showed they have resilience. It showed that they could go into these close games and still pull one out. But you look at Ohio State and you have to look at their very last game of the season, which is against Michigan. Michigan is another one of those teams. Uh, they're ranked number four this week. They have a very good chance of making it into the playoff. I think that is going to be as far as playoffs go, one of the most important games this season, uh, how that game shapes out. I think Jim Harbaugh has done an amazing job with Michigan and uh, putting them into a very good chance to make it into the playoff after being out of the, you know, one of the worst teams for the past couple of years, and now they're in the national spotlight. Also, uh, Washington is a team that I look at. To, they're they're kind of back into it. You know, years ago they were a big national uh, team, and now they're they're kind of back into it with their defense and with uh, playing very well offensively. Clemson is, is, is also a weird one because Clemson has a good chance to run it back into Louisville. Uh, Clemson barely got away with the win this week at NC State, only won because of a missed uh, field goal. Uh, and then going into overtime, played very well and got the ball near the goal line and scored. But uh, so far for me, I think my top four teams are going to be Alabama. I think Michigan makes it in. I think Washington makes it in. And I, I'm going to say it right now. I think Louisville goes in, beats Clemson again, possibly in the AC championship. Uh, or somehow Clemson falters somewhere, and I think Louisville makes it in. So those are my top four. Yeah, I, I agree to you to a, to a certain degree. Um, with Washington, what worries me is that if you trip, if you trip up, you stub your toe in the Pac-12, there's, I mean, you're, you're done. Like, the, co top to bottom conference-wise right now, they do not have the, the depth to really justify a, even a one-loss Pac-12 opponent uh, in, in, the, in the playoff. Uh, but I definitely think Washington is, is uh, you know, talented enough to put them in that position. Uh, Alabama, totally agree. Uh, I mean, you know, Tennessee at one point, you know, w wasn't necessarily looking to be a world beater, but was getting the job done in dramatic fashion oftentimes. Um, and for them to, to lose 49 to 10, I think says a lot about, uh, you know, a Alabama and, and the way they played. And then the Ohio State game against Wisconsin, I agree with you that matchup against Michigan is going to be huge. Um, but I do feel like, because some people always look at close games and wonder, well, 
you won, but you won close. It was an overtime. Um, sometimes that's as quote unquote as good as a loss. I don't <laughs> think necessarily to a Wisconsin that's the case, but that's how you know the, the margin for error is very close when when choosing um, you know teams to be in the college football playoff. Uh, so look to the Ohio State and and uh, Michigan game certainly to be a, a determining factor. Um, and then it, what worries me about Clemson, and then we'll we'll move on, is that they very well may win uh, the Atlantic Division, but the champion out of the Coastal, whether that be you know North Carolina or whoever it turns out to be, it, it looks like it possibly might be North Carolina, but Virginia Tech has to lose again uh, in order for that that matchup to work. Um, they're the kind of team that could definitely jump up and, and, and bite a, a Clemson team. And then I'm not sure that anyone from the ACC gets in because I just don't feel like you have po possibly a Louisville, depending on how things shake out. Exactly. But, you know, um, I guess we'll see. Well, well, typically, you know, the college football, it always seems that they tend to favor the SEC. Uh, that seems to be the college football. Particularly the SEC West. Yeah, particularly. Uh, I think that's why Tennessee kind of was, was – Picked as like such a, a big team, yeah. especially going in against Alabama. Tennessee has been a good team this year, but they've also squeaked out a couple of victories. They squeaked out one against Appalachian. Uh, they squeaked out one against Virginia Tech, I believe, is that the game they won on the last second? Uh, what, what was the one? No, Virginia the last... Tech was the uh, battle at Bristol. That's right. Um, and then the, the Georgia game. Georgia was game. The That's one what I'm trying of. to think of is when they won on the Hail Mary. Uh, so they squeaked by, and we really saw them uh, get trounced and saw how powerful Alabama would be. Uh, as far as an ACC school, I think you're completely right about that. As far as North Carolina or uh, Virginia Tech being able to come in and beat Clemson, I think that's a very good chance. North Carolina hasn't looked like a bad team this year. I think they've won one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Uh, some have even talked about Heisman exactly. with him, but uh, who knows? I, it's really up in the air right now, especially for the ACC. If Carolina hadn't played in a monsoon against Virginia Tech, um, <laughs> growing up a Carolina fan, uh, so I'm a little biased, but I, I think that game may have been different. Uh, but we'll go ahead and, and move on to the NFL, uh, and we'll start with the Panthers. Guys, you, you obviously know the Panthers dropped another one, 41-38 uh, to 38 against the Saints. Who that? Or who, who dat? Excuse me. Uh, but... Um, for me personally, I've lost a little bit of hope um, because even if they turn it around, you're one in five, you put yourself in a very bad position. Um, but Braxton here supposedly has some hope for, for Panther Nation. Braxton, I'm very eager to hear this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how do you feel about the Panther season so far? You know, guys, not good. <laughs> one, one in five, you look at their record, you look at some of the things they're dealing with, Yes. Don't get me wrong here. You know, it's not as bad as we think. But yes, one in five is not good. And I, I really do believe it's going to be very difficult for them to make the playoffs. Don't get me wrong there. But preface my statement there. First of all, it's not as bad as we think it is, and here's why. If we go back to last season, at this point, week six of last season, they could have, the Panthers could have easily been three and two. Okay? They, they squeaked out one against the Seahawks. Really, uh, if, if we go back to that game and, and see the winning play, the Cam Newton pass right in the middle to Greg Olson, if the Seahawks have a chance to do that, do that again, nine times out of ten, they're not blowing the coverage and letting Greg Olson go right down the middle of the field and have a touchdown. They, they, they sort of squeaked by at that one. I forget the other game. There's another one they really uh, shouldn't have won. I think it was the first game of the season. Um, Chargers, I believe? No, it wasn't the Chargers. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, it, it's irrelevant. But... Uh, they, they really could have been 3-2. and two. And at this point in the season, you look at the teams they've lost to and the teams they've lost to on field goals. They've lost on field goals three times. Denver, Tampa Bay, and now uh, New Orleans. Uh, and if you go to those games, the Panthers, uh, now yesterday there was a couple of very favorable um, pass interference calls on the goal line. Three times that happened. Um, so that was the first time this season that we've seen the Panthers have some favorable calls in their way. Um, but the other games, there have been some really unfavorable ones against the Panthers that could have turned the game. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's a good excuse for the lack of defensive pressure they've, they've put on the quarterback, which has been really abysmal for how much money they've invested on the defensive line. Um, they're just average in, in that category. Um, but if, if you go to some of these games that they've just barely lost, they could easily be 3-2 and two right now. Now, last year they could have been 3-2, and two, ended up being 6-0 and oh at this point. So. Or no, no, that doesn't add up, right? The bad math, five and a half. I'm sorry. Uh, but 
it's not as bad as we think. Sure, they're probably not going to make the playoffs, but the team itself is not as bad. The defense has been terrible. I looked at some of the. Uh, if you if you go to some of the uh, best defensive teams in the in the um, uh, in the NFL, you think of what Denver, Seattle, Five Minnesota, teams. Arizona, and sometimes New England can be put there too as well. Mm -hmm. They're they're average as far as spending on their front seven. Uh, the Panthers invest thirty million in their front seven. Now the uh, the Seahawks are an exception. They spend about fifty million, um, but thirty million is about average for if you want to be a good defensive team, you're average. But, one more point here, 11 sacks on the season for the Panthers. That's middle of the pack. For a team that uh, has 11 sacks this season, the average team that has 11 sacks this season is only spending $17 million on their wow. defensive line. Mm -hmm. So they're underperforming by a large degree. So they've got to pick that up. But mm -hmm. as far from that, it's not as bad as we think it is, America. It's not as bad as we think it is. Yeah. Usually, kind of how that formula plays out for, or at least seemingly so, uh, defensively, you know, teams draft really well. You get that first contract, um, and you know, so you got four years of that, you know, core group. Um, so that's what makes it so hard to kind of stay uh, atop the mountain when it comes to you know defensive football. Uh, the Seahawks did it for a longer period than than most. Yeah. Uh, you, you saw it kind of trail off to some degree defensively at, at one point last year, um, but. And even if you do re-sign all those guys for more money, like you said, and you have a, a higher salary or a more salary tied up in your defense, for whatever reason, particularly if you just made a Super Bowl run, even if you didn't win, mm -hmm. your your drive just doesn't seem to be there. That's what makes guys like Bill Belichick so good. That's what guys uh, like Nick Saban, Nick Saban, that's why he's so good, um, is because every single year you get the same, you know, performance out of those guys. Now, I mean, um, no doubt, uh, Dave Gettleman is not all, has never been one just trying to spend money. That's why he let no. go of Josh Norman. If they would have signed Norman for the $14 million he wanted, they would have been up there with Seattle as far as spending money on their defense. And he didn't want to do that. It used to, we saw this two years ago when they went 7, 8, and 1, when they let go basically everybody on their receiving core. Yeah. They went 7, 8, and 1 that year after he did that. So this is, unfortunately, this is how he likes to run things. He's taken a year off, which you hate to do that with what kind of the players they have on offense. You don't want to take a year off, but he is, apparently. Uh, but he, apparently he's taking a year off, and then maybe next year we'll see some of these cornerbacks he drafted pan out a little better than yeah. they are right now. Moving on to fantasy football, um, we've each had our ups and downs, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> yes. uh, you know, um, personally, I, I, I did not have two good weeks this leading up to this week. Uh, I'm feeling okay about, about this week. Um, Producer Rob, he's having a good week. But we'll go ahead and we'll transition to the individual matchups here for fantasy football. We'll take a look at those and, and kind of see how, how each of us uh, are doing. Um, looking at Joey Beretti, he has 62, uh, which <laughs> is better than, than previous be, previously. Uh, but looking at this matchup right here, uh, this is um, Jax and Adam Wittens. Uh, Jack, you're, you're edging him uh, by 20 right now. Um, you know, what would you attribute to your success? Um, Adam here uh, <laughs> is not necessarily putting up a lot of much of a fight, uh, but what has worked for you this week? Uh, seemingly, it was a fairly a lean week uh, for you to this point. I think the biggest thing is Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, you know, a lot of people said, don't trust the rookie. Uh, most people didn't think he was going to do that well. They thought he was kind of a stretch to take him in the first round. Uh, has proven, has had three straight games of over like 130 yards, I believe. Uh, he has been my rock as far as my offense goes. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at him, also Amari Cooper uh, having, having a solid game. You usually can count on him for having at least 100 yards. Uh, and that's, that's really about it as far as this week. Not a great, great week for uh, Russell. Didn't get in the end zone like I wanted him to. But, yeah. Uh, Unless uh, Castan Zaro is that yeah is that whose kicker is yeah, yeah unless yeah. he has the game of his life <laughs> uh, I, I don't I don't think he will I think uh, well I think you I'll, still got I'll Marshall okay. and Fitzgerald yeah, yeah. I, I do have yeah. uh, Brandon Marshall and and Larry Fitzgerald to play I tonight, think so. I think you'll be fine I think you'll move on to uh, to four and two uh, on the year uh, moving on to the uh, to the next matchup here uh, and we'll take a look at that one and this would be my matchup um, and I was playing uh, Sam this week. And Sam didn't have a bad week, uh, but I did have the luxury of having two different guys go for plus 30, McCoy and um, Beckham. 
Uh, and then Andrew Luck didn't have the, the worst of weeks. He had 23. Um, so I, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling okay uh, about this week. I think I'll improve to, um, to four and two, uh, like I said, after two kind of lean weeks. And, uh, you know, just managing the team, you know, like you should. You know, I, I, I let myself down two weeks, so I, I got uh, to get back Sam on I'm surprised Sam didn't go with uh, Brady for QB because that's, that's in I, his lineup. I am surprised he's as well. He's just too sick yeah. to I am surprised as well. Uh, he's not here to defend himself. So, no. so that sure. means we can we talk about what a bad decision. Yeah. 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 Most probably. Uh, but like I said, I think I'll, I think I'll move on to, to four and two, and I'm feeling good about it. But we'll go ahead and roll on to the, uh, to the next matchup. And this is Greg and Carlin's. Uh, and Greg, right now, you uh, have her by uh, 12. And do you think you'll be able to, uh, to keep that? Uh, you know, that's a, that's a good question. It all depends on whether or not the, uh, the Jets play better or the, uh, the Cardinals play better today. Um, but I, I tend to think I've got a pretty good chance. Um, that said, I had some underperformance. I think, I mean, Carlin obviously was hit by Roethlisberger going out injured. Yep. So uh, that uh, lowered the amount of points she was going to get. Breeze had a, an incredible game, unfortunately for the Panthers, yesterday. <laughs> um, so that, you know, is what brought his score up to plus 30. Um, so I, I'm cautiously optimistic to use my phrase again. I think, yeah. I think what we need to do is, um, I'm not in this league, but if, if, you're, if you need a quarterback, just go pick up whoever the Panthers are playing <laughs> every week <laughs> as you get blasted. Well, unfortunately, I, I think you have a point there, Braxton. So, um, but <laughs> we'll, 500 we'll, yards. We'll see. Yeah, possibly yards. Carlin can look into it since uh, Roethlisberger just went down. Uh, but moving on to the, to, the, to the final matchup of the week here. And this is Rob's matchup. Uh, producer Rob, he was playing Joey. Uh, 99 to, to 62 in, in favor of Rob. Um, surprisingly, um, Joey did play uh, <laughs> everyone at, at a position this week. Which he must, was, he which must was have good. heard us talking about it. He, he, must have, he, he must have heard us talking trash. Um, but uh, this matchup's already uh, gone final here. Rob has gotten the win. Um, so I'm sure Rob has a nice little glow about him um, due to that. Uh, but um, that does wrap up fantasy football here uh, this week. And um, I think all of us, like I said, we've all had our ups and downs, uh, but it's been, it's been a good season so far. So I'm looking forward to the playoffs. Playoffs are always super exciting playoffs. for fantasy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you don't, it's, it's something you don't want to talk about before they get here sometimes, but uh, looking forward to it. I think I got a chance. <laughs> I believe. I believe. <laughs> But thank you for watching Sports Bar this week. And don't forget to follow us on App TV and Twitter and Instagram. And like us on Facebook to find new updates about shows and episodes. I'm Travis Stanley. See you next week right here for a new episode of Sports Bar. Good night.